Hi, I'm Tom, VA2FSQ, and today I'm going to show you how to use the IQ Spectrum Scopes for the products, for my products, Win for K3 Suite, Win for ICOM Suite, and Win for Yesu Suite. Okay, here we have a spectrum uh, of the AM broadcast band, and I picked that mainly because very few signals today on the ham bands. We'll check back in a little while, but at the moment decided to, sh to do it here because it looks a little more interesting. What we see here is we see a spectrum from the IQ output of the ICOM IC7610. This is brand new. They just released it a couple of weeks ago with a new firmware update and ICOM uh, graciously provided the um, programming interface to this. So what we see here is we see a spectrum that's covering approximately 1.9 uh, megahertz wide. Okay, now it could be when you start this up you won't see anything that looks like that. Well the very first thing that you should do then is click on the reset button over here on the right. What the reset button will do is it will uh, reset the span of the spectrum to the maximum which is derived from the sampling rate of the radio. It will also reset the uh, amplitude scale here on the left to a range of about minus 200 dBm up to about plus 20. Now one of the number one questions people ask me when they go onto the ham band is why are the peaks so small and how do you zoom in the Y direction? Okay, well that's the first thing I'm going to be explaining today. If you take a look on the right here of the, of the spectrum window, you see there are a couple of sections here. We've got uh, a section called Zoom Tools, and then we've got a section called Mouse Mode. Now, the Mouse Mode is what you're probably going to be using more than anything else. And there's two modes that the mouse can be used in. One is the Pan Mode, and the other is the Zoom Mode. Now, in the Pan Mode, what you can do is you can come into the spectrum, hold down the left mouse button and then pan the spectrum up and down or left and right if you've zoomed in a bit. Okay, so that's handy if you want to put the baseline very close to, to the bottom of the window. Um, but in general what you're going to be using most is the zoom mode. Now when you put the mouse into zoom mode you can now zoom in on the spectrum and the way that you do that you take your mouse and you draw a box around the area of interest. So I'm going to draw the box, let's say, right here. And what you then see is the spectrum is now zoomed in. You can continue to do that, making it even closer if you wish. Uh, and just keep zooming in, just as you wish. Uh, you also have the ability to undo that, to get back to where you were, and so on. Now, when you are in zoom mode, you can also take your mouse and come up to the upper scale here, hold down the left button, and then pan across the whole spectrum. This can be quite large depending on just how far in you are zoomed. Okay, so you have the ability to do that and see other, other signals that are around. So I'm going to click on reset again. Okay, so let's zoom in again, back to where we were. So again, you just draw a box around it. Now the next, the other thing you can do is once you've zoomed in to an area of interest, you can then also come up to the zoom tools here. Okay, so zoom plus, for example, will zoom in the X direction only. Same thing with zoom minus. Okay, now uh, at one point, when you're looking at the spectrum, you'll notice that something seemed to change. Well, that's one of the unique features of uh, this spectrum scope, is that the minute you get lower than about 200 kilohertz in span, the sampling rate is changed. Okay? Effectively, you're going, down from, you're going from sampling rate of 1.2 megahertz down to about 200 kilohertz what this results in is much uh, greater resolution of the spectra. 
Okay. So at the moment, I am still in the 1.9 megahertz, and you can see it's got quite a range of signals that you can see, even though I'm quite zoomed in. I can pan across the whole whole span. But now if I continue to zoom a little more, at one point it's going to change the sampling rate, which I believe is right there. So now we have approximately 200 kilohertz. You can continue to zoom again, and as you zoom more and more and more, the span that you can uh, pan across gets larger as well. So basically, that's it. That's all you have to know on how to use the spectrum scope. This gives you all of the, uh, the tools that you need to zoom in anywhere on the spectrum. There's no sliders necessary. Um, it's very, very simple once you get the hang of it. Just the very first time, people say, well, how do I use this? Now you've seen how to use the zoom controls. Now that we have the zoom controls mastered, <laughs> Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the other features of the spectrum. Uh, over here on the left, we have three sliders. One is called uh, is for the high level of the waterfall, and one is for the low level of the waterfall. Together, they establish the dynamic range of the colors that you see here on the waterfall. So the low, for example, if I put it like that, I don't see anything. Okay, on the other hand, if I move it in the other direction, it's going to get brighter and brighter until the background is very bright. So I'm basically going to want to adjust this down to a level where I can see a certain amount of noise. I mean, it's up to you, up to you where you, where you want to put it. Now for the high, it takes care of the high end of the waterfall. So if I reduce that, you'll see that the dynamic range is changing. Okay, um, I'm going to want to adjust it so I see a bit of red and some strong signals. If you adjust it too high, then it starts to show a little bit of pixelation as it goes up. So I would keep it at a reasonable level, something like this. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you change bands, okay, the noise level in general will change. And so the uh, waterfall will change as well. Now, so that means if you're coming from this band and you're going to, let's say, 20 meters, 15 meters, and so forth, uh, you may need to readjust the, uh, the, the low end and the high end. Now, it's saved by band, okay? So if you go back to another band, it will have the correct values that you set previously. Uh, so it does this um, for each band. Now, also, the noise levels can change during the day. So you can come back in a few hours and you'll see, hey, the, the, uh, the background is again too low. Well, the noise level has gone down, so then you can adjust it. Okay, so I'm going to put it about like this. Now, the other control here is the waterfall speed. If you put it all the way down to the end, it goes quite slow. Okay, uh, if you put it the other direction, it can go very, very fast. Okay, so it gives you the ability to adjust that. I like to put it somewhere uh, around like this, but I mean, that's user preference. Okay, next, what do we have here? We have eight, sorry, 10 function buttons. Now these function buttons can uh, be configured to uh, do certain, certain things. For example, you can have this set to go to the 20 meter band, you can have this set to go to 40 meters, you can set this button to be a span, so let's say plus or minus 50 kilohertz. Um, th it's really just about anything you want can be done here, and it uses the built-in macro facilities of Win for ICOM suite, Win for K3 suite, and Win for Yesu suite. I'm not going to get into a discussion of that today because uh, that's really uh, much more involved. Okay, next. What else do we have here? Well, we have two buttons here. One is for VFO A and one is for VFO B. Now what this does is it selects uh, the VFO that's going to be used when you come up into the spectrum and you double click on a peak. So let's say I wanted to go to this signal 
I would double click on it and then it moves inside the passband this is the passband of uh, the radio at that particular time VFO B button will move the VFO B passband which you can see is right here at 1760 so if I double click I'm now moving in there and so this is perfect if you're working split it will show it will allow you to pick a uh, place where you can transmit okay so those are how those buttons work okay beyond that we have a couple of other controls here we have uh, the averaging this uh, concerns uh, the level of averaging of the signals if I turn it down you can see the peaks get much much uh, faster uh, I turn it up and you can see that you can get it so that it does a lot of peak averaging if you wish so I like to keep it either at 4 or 8 depending on the conditions and so forth the next thing you're going to want to know about how to use the spectrum scope is how to tune and how to set the options for tuning well in general uh, you use the mouse to double click on peaks so if I just come up here and double click on it it'll do a QSY I can also do the same thing in the waterfall that's generally how you're going to be using things a lot however you know especially if you are zoomed to a very large span uh, you're not going to necessarily be able to get it with the mouse to get on the right frequency uh, so at that point you're going to want to tune a bit so if you right click up in the spectrum section you'll see you have a number of options one of these is the wheel tune increment this can be selected from 1 Hertz all the way up to 10 kilohertz normally I leave it around 100 Hertz because um, I can actually double click on a peak and then just make small little uh, adjustments so for example you'll see I'm at 100 Hertz now and I'm spinning the mouse wheel as you can see spectrums now moving over okay you can change that of course to be uh, much higher if you want 500 Hertz it's gonna move much quicker but I think 100 Hertz overall is a good uh, option okay so I'm gonna put that back to 100 also in the right click options there's a couple of other things one of them is to snap to the nearest 100 Hertz so you'll notice if I click anywhere okay uh, we're going to be at 100 Hertz boundaries uh, it's difficult to see without the, spe uh, the frequency on here but I can show you a little bit later uh, you can also this is a, a snap to the nearest kilohertz and you can also snap to the nearest hundred okay so those are two things that are important you also have the ability to jump up to the nearest 500 Hertz or to jump down to the nearest 500 so if I was to say jump up it's gonna go to the nearest 500 Hertz now it's more important when you're working voice um, uh, SSB for example on the ham bands because a lot of times people will be at like 14.00 uh, zero zero, sometimes 14 uh, 0.01 and you miss it by a couple of hundred Hertz so it's very easy to just go ahead and say jump up or jump down that's basically how these controls work okay so the final thing I want to show today is how uh, to show spots on the spectrum when for ICOM K3 and Yesu Suite has a built-in spotting program that uses your club log profile uh, to filter spots. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. This is already pre-configured. I'm using a cluster uh, that I often use. Uh, you can basically set this up to use any cluster you wish. And if you take a look at what's appearing is you're seeing uh, all the various spots and they're all color-coded for example uh, based on your club log profile for example uh, the yellow ones are new spots uh, brown ones are worked and the greens are confirmed but you can change these colors to something that you're interested in anyways once you have uh, your collecting spots if you come up to the spectrum you can click on the thing called spots and what's going to happen is the spots are going to show up on the spectrum 
Okay. Uh, now. Okay. Uh, how do you go and actually do a QSY to them? Well, down below you have some triangles which correspond to the colors that you see here. As uh, the labels on the spots also correspond to the colors. And if you click on one of these, it will do a QSY to that call sign. You can also come up here and double click, for example, on the little triangle up here, and it'll do a QSY as well. Now, one thing that's interesting is if you move the mouse over the spot, you can actually see some information about it. Uh, the only thing is, is you have to zoom in enough. If you take a look, we've got a span here of 300 some odd kilohertz, which is really uh, too much to uh, have the resolution necessary to get down to 100 hertz here as, as would be needed. Uh, so as an example, I'm going to come over to uh, the WSJT area, which I guess is right here. I'm going to click in here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Keep zooming. Okay. Now once you've zoomed in, you'll find that you will now see the call sign as well as the country show up. Okay, if I come across like that. There's not a lot of activity today, which is really uh, strange, <laughs> but uh, maybe later tonight. Um, but yeah, and if there happens to be, as is often the case on a WSJTX on an FT8 frequency, um, what you will find is that if you come down here and click on it, you may see a whole bunch of call signs. Well, I decided not to clutter uh, the uh, the image up here by listing all the call signs. You can imagine if you've got a whole bunch of different pe people that have been spotted on the WSJT frequency, you'd see a whole bunch of call signs here. So instead, I take the first one in the list, and if there's more and you come down here, you will see more that come up. Now, this spotting uh, capability um, can be used with just about any uh, cluster. If you come down here to the control panel, you can see some of the uh, options. For example, here you can put in the address and the port of a cluster. You can even use other programs such as N1MM or DX Lab uh, and some of the others, uh, CW Skimmer, uh, that have their own Telnet servers. So you would put the address of that server in here and the port, and then the spots will come and appear in the club log spotting. Please remember that to use this you need a club log account uh, and you have to have at least one record that shows up. So there you have it. This is basically everything you need to know about the spectrum scope. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.